In my opinion, Nike SB is really no different than Karyuma. Now, of course, people want to combat that with the ideology that Nike is actually making a quality shoe versus Karyuma and they're supporting skateboarding in a different way. And again, I'm going to say you should question all of that. We're, we're going to dive into some of the weeds. One example could be Janowski's shoe. Nike has basically cheapened the materials to lower the bottom line, which is a very typical move to squeeze out more corporate profits and not really focus too much on the quality of the shoe, just how to hit that volume. But more importantly, I'm going to be talking about these different brands and these three different models. I'm going to be rating all three of these shoes on durability, board fill, impact, and overall aesthetics. You know, beautiful last resort, skater owned, skater operated, made in Vietnam. I've seen like photos of last resort posts on their Insta stories of the factory. I'm not saying I'm sitting here, I'm going to the factory, not Jim Kitty. I don't know exactly what's going on. However, I do think right away there's more ethics in this shoe. So we're not gonna dive too much in the weeds of ethics. However, I think that is something that should be considered when you're talking about skate brands or shoe brands for sure. <laughs> To be honest, my favorite skate shoe that I've skated in the past year was my first pair of Last Resorts. So recently I purchased a pair of these mid tops from a local skate shop. I basically went on the Last Resort website. I looked for all their dealers. I found a shop. I went on the shop and found my size, ordered them online. And then I went in to go pick them up because I'm a big believer of supporting skate shops, especially since I have a YouTube channel. Like I shouldn't be out there just like complaining and not supporting skate shops. I'm a big believer that skate shops essentially keep the community going the reason you have skate parks the reason you have skate brands the reason you have teams crews spots everything all at the core skate shops you know really do help the community and the industry grow so we're not going to go too much into that but i guess the reason i do want to bring that up is because i do limit myself sometimes with the options that are available at my local shops i know that works against me i could probably go direct to consumer go direct to these shoes and or go direct to the website and buy these shoes from last resort i totally understand that however i wanted to go support rose street skate shop so i was stoked i got to go check it out got to say what's up to the guys in there um and i did get a size smaller but we're we're or half size so we're gonna get into all that in a second at the end of the day it's about supporting the community that's what skate shops do skate shops aren't making like huge margin or huge profits or walking home to like huge billionaire houses or real estates like at the core skateboarding you know it's not all about profit and don't get me wrong we have to make money but i think the point that i'm trying to drive home here is that i try to support the things that i believe in so first i'm going to talk about the last resorts let's let's get these out of here for now it's distracting me for the last resort i did a durability of five and again this is one out of five scale so very durable shoe impact three board fill five aesthetics four a total of 17 these are on the top of my list and to be honest i've only had these for about three weeks now so i can't give you a full fair review on the mid tops however i had the regular last resorts not the mid tops and those shoes lasted me so long up to the point until where i had to get these shoes when i was in new york we'll get into that in a second but I did get a half size down because last time I got a size 10, which is normally what I wear. And I did feel like they were a little bit bigger and they only had a nine and a half available at the skate shop. So I went in ahead with a half size down and I will say it was pretty tight at first. Like the first couple of days, I had to loosen every single lace all the way down to the bottom, which can take some time and be a little bit annoying, especially if you're just trying to skate right away. But that's not what I did. I honestly just loosened them up put them on and I wore them for about two weeks before I even skated them. I was just walking around whenever I take walks in the morning and in the afternoon and just trying to break them in without going straight into a hundred kit flips or anything like that. I really wanted to try to see if I can get comfortable with them before I start to go skate them. As you can see, it's still, they're still really fresh. I have skated them about like four or five different sessions, skated a couple of DIY spots with them. And I skated some big transition with them too. And that was the one thing that I was kind of hesitant about. I wasn't sure if they're gonna do good on big transition because my other ones, I did feel like there's so much board control, but I was sacrificing a lot of board control for impact. And that's a common thing with any skate shoe. You're either gonna have to have more board control or more impact 
or more resistance for impact. So you kind of have to like, you're kind of counterbalancing it. And I guess it really depends on what you skate. I like skating a lot of transition. So impact's not a huge deal for me. I will say, I don't think these are good for a high impact shoe. So if you're jumping downstairs all day long, you might not want to consider this shoe. You might want to consider one of the other shoes I'm going to talk about in a second. But as far as board feel, it is so good, durability, is really good too. My other pair lasted me about two months and I still wasn't totally worn out of them. However, I did ruin the bottom of the shoes because I'm always filming. A lot of times I'm dragging my, my heel of my shoes. So I tend to ruin the shoe a lot faster. I go through the heels faster. And when you have that nice board control, you are sacrificing, you know, normally a thinner sole, meaning you're probably gonna grind down it better. But the upper of the shoe is so clean the way that they designed it and the way that it just sits and there's nothing really rubbing against here. They even have this little swivel right here, which I think helps. And overall, the shoe aesthetically looks super dope. Like I feel like I can wear this to a dinner. I can almost wear this out and then I can go skate with it. You know, where um, I'm not saying you can't do that with a pair of Vans or something like that, but it's definitely like associated with a skate shoe where I could probably put on some black pants with these and they might even look like a dress shoe, especially if I clean them up. I should probably should have done that before this video. I've been playing in some like rain and skating lately, so a little, little bit dirty. I did make a video about the other last resorts that I skated. Those were really good. I'll leave a link up above if you want to check that video out. No obnoxious over branding on the side, uh, pointless stitching, anything like that. I'm definitely looking forward to skating the shit out of these. But before I had these, I actually was messing with these Lopez Converse. And I had these for quite a long time. Let me say, I put these through the ringer, as you can see. I've actually been trying to learn how to knee slide lately. So I'm gonna make a whole video on knee slides, but basically these are now my knee slide shoes because the thing with doing knee slides, you start ruining this up really quick. But as you can see, the sides, you know, they've lasted quite a long time to say, I've really put them through the ringer. So overall scale on these shoes, one out of five, like I said, durability, I put down a four, impact three, board fill four, and aesthetics four, coming in out of the total of 15. When I say impact three, I think that was the one thing I was really surprised on. I thought these shoes would have a much better impact but to me, like I said, I'm more about board control. I'm more hyped on board control. So I was excited to feel that. And they did get soft right off the bat. I will say that like these shoes kind of got flimsy after two weeks. However, they didn't rip. And that was, was really nice. I was able to feel the board. They didn't rip and they stayed pretty durable for the most part. But the impact on them was kind of surprising. I was getting some big training and running out. I was just like, wow, I can definitely feel like the, the ridge of my, the arch of my foot kind of hitting and running sometimes when I was running out of the transition, I could definitely feel it. So I will say there's not as much support in these shoes as it looks. However, they are pretty durable. The inside oddly enough started ripping before anything else, like over here, like over here as well. So I don't know if that's just like a stitching or a design issue, but they both kind of ripped in the same spot on the inside of the shoe. But uh, pretty interesting, you can see how worn down it did get. However, I think the aesthetics of these shoes are super cool. I didn't love the red Converse. I mean, Nike, Converse, Kiriuma, they all have to do that like super bright. Here I am, here's my logo. I like the Lopez in gold. I think that was pretty cool. Probably would never get these shoes again. It was kind of on a dime. Let me explain that. I was at KCDC Skate Shop in New York and I was actually looking for these shoes, these last resorts. I didn't want to get these at all. At the time I had kind of a hill bruise. Like I said, I had my other last resorts that I was really wearing down. And at that point I needed some new shoes. That was my fault. And I really wanted to get some mid tops. So that's why I went with these never wanted to wear Nikes. However, I was like, screw it. Lopez, let's support him. Let's get the Converse. And then I can like make a fair judgment if you know the quality of Nike and Converse is actually comparable, any different to a last user. And I could honestly say there's not much difference. I would actually say that these Lopez got ruined a lot faster or lost their like stiffness to the shoe much sooner than they did my regular last resort. However, I do think they were pretty durable. Like they're getting ripped up at the top as you can see. I feel like I just got really distracted right there. What was it, what was I saying? Oh yeah, KCDC skate shop in New York. I basically wanted to get their last resorts. They didn't have any of my sizes. They didn't have any low tops, just none. And the only mid top shoe they had, which is something I really wanted to try. I just wanted to kind of 
get a little more coverage on my ankle just to get that extra support to see what it was like, test it out. And these were the only shoes that I liked from an aesthetics point and just from like a point of wanting to skate them, to be completely honest. Like I was like, all right, I'll probably skate those. I really did like how thin this tongue is. I like a really thin tongue. It's not super thick on the top. However, it is still got that nice padding on the side for shark bites. You know, there's some good detail and I thought the design overall of this shoe was pretty good. I'm not really trying to support Converse or Nike. Now, moving on to a little more of a, hopefully not to get ripped for this one, but the controversial Vans shoe, which, you know, no longer is a skate shoe. I totally understand that VF Corp is involved with this. However, I don't think VF Corp necessarily falls under the umbrella of Nike. They're not that bad. I've looked into these things, I've done my research, I'm trying to figure out more, so if you want to educate me, please do down in the comment section. But these Vans Rowan shoes, I will say, definitely on the comparable side as far as durability to the last resorts. And I will say, if you're someone that likes to take a lot of impact, like you like jumping downstairs, this actually might be a better shoe than the last resorts because it is stiffer. Like even now, later, like look at that. Like it just feels like, I don't know if you can see, can't really see it, but it feels so much stiffer than like if I tried to bend this Converse. I mean, it bends right away. And let's see. Even, even the last resort, the thing about the last resort is it bends, but there's still that like strong structure in the sole. And I think that's something that they really have mastered. The ratings I gave it are a durability of four, an impact of four, a board fill of three, and the aesthetics of three. And I will say that's one thing I do want to elaborate a little bit on. I was pretty surprised that this shoe didn't have as much board fill as I thought it would. but. Again, that's always like combating it with good impact. So it had more impact. It felt a lot stiffer. It's just a stiffer shoe. But then again, it does make sense. Uh, Rowan is someone that is jumping a lot of stuff and he's also a skating training. So I feel like this is probably a good like in-between shoe. Like if you do like jumping down stuff, but you want kind of a little bit of a board fill, this might be a decent option for you. When it comes down to like the money, like that's really what it comes down to. I've bought all these shoes. I'm not sponsored by any of these shoe companies. Like I said, I like to spend the money that I make from this channel on skateboard products. So I'll save it up, buy some shoes. And in this case, I do think this shoe might be your real bang for the buck. As far as the price goes, it did last me a really long time. It was on the cheaper side compared to all three of these shoes, which I think, uh, you know, if you're a skater, you're trying to make your shoes last because no matter what, you're going to be destroying them. No matter what shoe you brand you pick, uh, even if you're a crazy sneaker Nike dude and you're like, this guy's out of his mind, probably because you don't actually skate those shoes and you just collect them in your closet. That's cool. Do you. The thing is like when I'm buying shoes, I'm using them to go skateboard with. That, that is their sole purpose. However, that doesn't mean I wanna like sacrifice a good look of a shoe or anything like that. I still wanna have a rad aesthetic of a shoe, but be able to go skate it as well. I'm just not the type of person that really gets a shoe that sits in my closet. Actually, one exception. One exception, I got these Birkenstocks recently. Yeah, I just threw you the curveball real quick. I got these Birkenstocks recently because somebody commented on my channel that uh, these are really good for arch support in your foot and your feet when you're just kind of like hanging around the house and walking around. So I'm actually really hyped on these. I've been wearing them just like around the house and when I'm not skating. So I guess I contest my other thing. I just don't have, I don't get the idea of having sneakers and not putting them to use. That just, I don't get it. I know a lot of sneaker heads are probably like, cool, I hope, I wish there was more people like you. I wish there was too. Moving on. So I hope that gives you a little bit of insight to kind of these three different shoe brands. Got my notes over here. <laughs> and notes, notes everywhere. You say WTF on them too, check it out. WTF notes, all right. Getting distracted now, ADHD is getting the best of me. So I'm super excited to be skating these a lot more. I have been uh, really trying to just put them to their test recently. Now I'm fully skating them. The half size, I will say my toes are right at the edge, but I have been running out and stuff and it occasionally it does kind of bother me, I'll be honest. Like I do wish I got the right size. I wish I got a size 10 true to size. So um, next time when I get a pair of last resorts, I will be getting a size 10, which is what I normally wear. But I do think you can go half size down. And especially if you're the type of person that wears a 10, but you know, you have like a, maybe like extra, extra wiggle room in a 10, nine and a half is probably gonna be really nice for you. So just something to consider. And I did realize in the first pair that they were, they did run a little bit bigger. 
However, there's nothing wrong with that with skating. I think a little bit of room is good for when you're running and stuff. Um, you want a little bit of move room, but you don't want too much where you're like you're jamming into it. Right now, I feel like uh, I'm in that in-between area. We'll see how these hold up. Let me know what you guys think down below. And uh, yeah, thank you. I appreciate all you. Subscribe if you're not already. Hit that like button. Go support Last Resort. Go support your local skate shop, whatever product you're buying. Just buy it from your local skate shop. It's not that hard. I know direct consumer is so much easier. It's at your fingertips. You're online right now. You can just click over to the next tab and buy something. But if you go to your skate shop, you get to hang out with somebody. You might find a new spot, new friend. Who knows what? Get out there. Mash.